What's going on, Bruce? Ladies and gentlemen, today is about business. Today is about getting ahead in this hobby. Today is about me living up to my name as your Pokemon TCG guidance counselor. But first of all, we got to take care of some business. So look in here. All of the stuff in here. I went to card shops not planning to buy any of this stuff. Every one of these cards has a shot at a Gem Mint 10, okay? And every one of them, every single one of them. When I bought this Maridon, I wasn't planning on buying that Maridon. Same with Goldango, okay? I had no plans on buying this Goldango. Skeledurge, same. Yesterday, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know about this. So I went to a card shop yesterday. I'm just using this as an example. And my plan was to buy a couple Stellar Crown booster bundles because they're being bad boys and selling them a little early, you know? Oh, take note of this Mariadon stamped Pokemon Center promo because we're going to talk about that later in this video. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I went to go buy Stellar Crown booster bundles, but instead I bought this Tapu Koko. And why did I do that? Because I have a philosophy that you should always take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. Don't go to a card shop or a bunch of card shops or a card show with only one thing on your agenda. Ign ignore everything else around you. If you do that, you will miss out on fantastic opportunities. This binder, this suitcase, all it is is fantastic opportunities that I found that in the future will probably net me a pretty big profit almost every single one of these cards, if indeed they do get a 10. Point is, learning how to grade, understanding that the Pokemon TCG greater than any other TCG, sports cards, you name it, the difference in value between a PSA 10 and a PSA 9 is astronomical. Us Pokemon card fans, we care a lot about condition. And so that is what today's video is about. But we have to get to a winner in today's Pokepositivity September giveaway. So if your name is Valhalla, was 305038, something like that, congratulations, you won the Universe giveaway. So you won the uh, Collection 10 and the two Evolving Skies packs. Threw in the coin there too for you. Today's giveaway, bang. So here's the thing. Yes, this box does have a promo inside, okay? I'm just saying, don't, a promo pack right there. Don't open this box. This is the cleanest, most beautiful little Quaxley display box, and it comes with yours truly, Mimikyu, okay? Here's some base set packs you can open so that you don't open this beautiful Quaxley starter deck display box. And this giveaway is brought to you by Brian at Pokey and E. So guys, if you wanna enter into this giveaway for this beautiful Quaxley box with yours truly, and then rip open these and pull yourself a Gardevoir or Miriam, all you gotta do is one, be subscribed, and two, write Pokey and E, or thanks Brian in the comment section. Whipping packs by the stacks in the search for the snout. Anytime I pull a chunk, that's what it's about. Shiny pink, homie gray, rarity don't matter. I just need that little shark, chubby chunk, go fatter. Ripping packs by the stacks in the search for the snout. Anytime I pull a chunk, that's what it's about. Hey, Show ah! Once again, congratulations to Valhalla, and for today's giveaway, thank you very much, Brian Pokeyany. That's right, Brian or Pokeyany in the comments section. All right, so guys, today's video, two big words that I cannot teach you no matter what, and that's experience and discipline. So experience just comes with time, and discipline comes with experience. Both of those things go an incredibly long way in this hobby. So this video today is just going to be a down-to-earth, me sitting here having a realistic down-to-earth conversation with you about my experience and how I exercise discipline in this hobby to amass a pretty minty, pretty vast Pokemon card collection in a short amount of time, all right? So basically, I'm going to break this entire video down into three chapters. Chapter one is which sealed products to buy and when. Chapter two 
is investing versus gambling. And then chapter three is grading and flipping. So which sealed products to buy and when? Investing versus gambling and grading and flipping. That's the way this video is gonna go. And I just did that to give me some structure because I'm just gonna kind of spitball this whole thing and just kind of yeah. based on my experience, especially over the last two or three years, I got back in at 2018. Um, but things have changed with Scarlet and Violet, especially like things like when you should buy a booster box versus back in the day in Sword and Shield when, when maybe you should have bought a booster box. There's a lot of things that have changed recently. So this is going to be like an up-to-date in today's times. In 2024, how can you like save money, get ahead, and amass an awesome Pokemon card collection? So that's, that's literally what today is. So chapter one is which sealed products to buy and when and let's get into that right now all right so sealed products pretty much as you might assume across the board no matter what in every scenario opening sealed products is a net negative there's very small chance whatsoever that you open up a sealed pre uh sealed anything and you know end up on top and that's that's just inherently part of TCG collecting, and that goes for all forms of collectibles. That's just the way it works, right? So the battle is to get around that and to find other ways to not lose all your money, uh, you know, and instead maybe make money and survive in this hobby for as long as you, um, you know, would like to survive for. Most of us get into a hobby, and we envision that we'll be into that hobby for the rest of our life. And it's usually financial-related things or boredom or frustration, um, which is why we fall out of the hobby. So for which sealed products to buy and when, I think this is probably the most important because if you have no sense of direction and you're just buying anything and everything and whatever's being talked about, um, you're just gonna spiral out of control financially, um, you know, depending on how hard you go, and you're gonna have a very lackluster Pokemon card collection because it'll just be the hits that you pulled, right? So. Thankfully, the proliferation of vendor POV uh, videos on YouTube is a thing now, and so there's a massive amount of interest um, in Pokemon cards that aren't being ripped open and, oh my gosh, I pulled a Empoleon V, you know, shit like that. So the fact alone that there are people that are coming around to the idea of actual investments, actual collectibles, Actually, the buying and selling of things at market price, whether that be raw or graded, uh, that's a really good sign for the average intelligence level of a Pokemon TCG, uh, you know, collector. But so in my opinion, today in 2024, in this environment, in the Scarlet and Violet era, which products should you actually buy? And I'm actually referring to to buy to open. If you are going to open stuff, what should you buy and why all right so let's let's get into that right now so in my opinion sealed booster boxes i mean duh sealed booster boxes um but then pokemon center etbs the ones that come out you know that you can pre-order like two months before a set comes out and depending on the set sometimes they sell out quick sometimes they're they're still around even after release sometimes they sell out and get restocked um but why why am i saying the the smartest, if you have to open something, why does it have to be uh, the, the booster box or the Pokemon Center ETB? So first of all, let's talk about the booster box. So the booster box, um, I'm someone who, I don't do this. I, I should probably follow this advice. And the reason I don't do this is because I'm just a huge simp for Black Star promos, especially the Scarlet and Violet era promos. Um, and there's people like, say, TCA Gaming, and then Dama, someone else I've recently become pretty close with. Um, you know, TCA Gaming is like the number one collector of Pokemon cards in the world. Dama is more on my level, um, smaller. But, you know, there's some people that value promos a lot. And, you know, they love promos. But if you don't care about cheap promos that are worth 20 cents to a dollar raw, you know, then you should stick with booster boxes, okay? So, and when should you buy a booster box? A Scarlet and Violet era booster box when is the best time to buy a booster box well the best time to buy a scarlet and violet booster box is literally before or right when the set comes out or a week after the set comes out so the way it works here pretty much every set since this era has started 
upon release, you can get a, a Scarlet and Violet booster box somewhere between, you know, maybe if you're lucky, $90 on a TikTok deal to on average $109.99. Maybe worst you see on release is $115, $120, $125. But the point is, all of these, except for Scarlet and Violet base set, tend to have slowly gone up over time, whether it be three months, six months later, even Obsidian Flames is going up, okay? In Twilight Masquerade, definitely up, and that set's only been out two months. So you could have bought a Twilight Masquerade booster box a couple months ago for 9500 bucks. You definitely can't now. And that's not how it really worked with previous eras. Like previous eras, the timing in the booster boxes were a lot more volatile, not as predictable, and here it really is, you know, get it early, get it soon. And, and, and why booster box? Why not three pack blister? Why not ETBs? Why not this and all the other auxiliary products? It's because in my experience, because I do buy so many three pack blisters and single pack blisters and other things that have promos, um, there are often times where I spend hundred to $120 on that stuff. And I do not get the hits that I would have gotten if I just bought a booster box. And that is even true even still with nerfed sir pull rates um starting with temporal forces like if temporal forces and twilight masquerade have nerfed sir pull rates so you have like about a 35 to 40 percent chance of buying a booster box and not pulling an sir that that whole nerf pull rates theory like for that set that doesn't mean that doesn't also apply to the promos so what i'm saying is Yes, the Twilight Masquerade, Temporal Forces, and then Stellar Crown, those booster boxes, you might not actually get an SIR. But that's just even more proof that you might not get an SIR if you buy sleeve blister packs or a three-pack promo or a single-pack blister pack promo. Like, just across the board, it does not matter. There is no such thing, by the way, as, oh, these building battles are loaded, or the booster bundles for this set are way better than the ETBs. All of that shit is clickbait bullshit, where certain content creators uh, get tunnel vision and they think their experience that they're having is going to be shared across to everyone else. Um, it, it's just not it's just not the case. Um, yeah, like the only way you can get guaranteed hits basically at all period straight up is from a booster box. And that's coming from someone who generally doesn't buy booster boxes, but knows that he probably should, okay? So in my experience, even though, yes, I do buy a lot of auxiliary products for reasons related to promos and just hoarding promos, there's a part of me that wishes I diverted all that money into booster boxes instead, okay? So there's that. I would avoid all auxiliary products whatsoever if you have to open stuff, and I would just go straight to the booster box. Okay, now let's get into Pokemon Center exclusive ETBs, all right? So the difference between a retail product or a retail box and a hobby product or a hobby box is freaking massive to the extent that I think if people realized, just imagine this, if you will, for me, let's take any set, an ETB, just in your head, imagine how many ETBs of a regular ETB for a new set have to be printed to fill up all the stores, all the Walmarts, all the Targets, all the Best Buys, all the GameStops, all the everywhere that sells, all the distributors, the amount of ETBs that get printed for a set is, you know, what is it, millions or whatever? Whereas a Pokemon Center exclusive ETB stamped hobby box, so it's, it's, it's infinitesimal, the print run, compared to your regular ETB. These boxes, all they have to do is be stocked on one website or two websites, okay, or maybe... Yeah, two websites, the European and then the American Pokemon Center. That's two websites. That's a limited stock. They, they get sold out quick. Whereas, again, the regular ETBs everywhere, okay? We're talking more than 100x, like way, way, way more. So Pokemon Center ETB costs, what, 10, 10 bucks more? You get two extra packs. So that right there almost makes it worth it alone. Just the fact that you get the two extra packs... That's almost $10 value as it is. Plus you get a hobby box that says Pokemon Center. So it's already a reduced print run, better display box than the alternate regular retail version, right? But then now let's look at the stamped promo because you get a second promo that is stamped as we all know, right? Well, 
now that we could, we've had seven or eight sets come out, we can now see the prices of these previous Pokemon Center stamp promos. And guess what? The cheapest, the worst performing uh, Pokemon Center stamp promo is like still worth $10. And the best performing, the Snorlax from Scarlet and Violet 151, is worth like $55 or $60. So in the case of Scarlet and Violet 151, just one of your promos alone could cover the entire cost of the ETB. That means you get the box, the stuff, all the crap no one wants in the box, plus 11 packs and whatever all those hits give you for free just because you sold your promo and made almost all your money back, okay? So there is a massive potential for the promos themselves just selling them raw to get a huge percentage back because, again, anywhere from 10, some are 25, some are worth 30, the Snorlax is worth 50, and these are exclusive hobby stamped promos okay these are not retail promos they, they're just the box itself the stamp promo makes all the difference in the world for only about 10 to 15 dollars over a regular mass produced etb so in my opinion in this current climate the way scarlet and violet is headed if you have to rip open and you have to buy something sealed to rip open i would stick to booster boxes and i would stick to pokemon center ETBs, all right? I get it now. All right, so now investing versus gambling. So, how you conduct your business in this hobby can have massive, massive ramifications on your financial scenario. I think we all loosely, whether it's ourselves or we know someone or have a friend, Everybody knows someone who just is way too addicted or spends way too much money on Pokemon cards, okay? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, this hobby, this TCG, you could gamble all your money away, you can gamble your entire life away, or you can have fun and actually make a little money on the side and literally invest for the long term. You can do either one of those things with the same IP with the same product with the same niche. It's all about discipline and experience. Okay, so investing Buying a card at a market value Grading it investing $15 in it to grade That's investing ripping open a pack pulling nothing. That's gambling one is potentially plus 20 bucks, plus 30, plus 40, plus 50, plus 100. The other is an automatic minus four or five every time, damn near, okay? So the way all this is, this way all this works, of course, is the itch, the desire to pull the big hit. The Pokemon company is the biggest IP in the world because they have perfected a version of gambling and all the while, no one refers to it as gambling because it's just, you know, it's just a harmless, just a harmless little IP for children. And man, is it a fun TCG. And by the way, the TCG is growing immensely year after year. And that is awesome and an incredible sign for this hobby, even if you don't care about the TCG. But investing, you can actually make money doing this. There are so many cards that you can find raw down the street if you live in a, an area you know that has cards we'll get into that too because i know there's a lot of people that can't do what i do you can't get in your truck and drive 20 minutes to eight different card shops okay you might live in the middle of nowhere so i will have some information um you know later about what you can do as far as online only if you can only do this online but gambling 100 percent net loss you will inevitably be very very disappointed with your pokemon card collection if all you do is collect what is ripped from the packs you pay for it's just the imbalance is there for a reason and that's how it works and that's just how collectibles work in general okay investing because this ip is so damn popular there are opportunities left right front back and sideways to make money as long as you have experience and discipline all right Okay, so let's go. Let's get into grading and flipping because this is massively important. I have no idea what I'm doing. 
All right, so first of all, right off the bat, in today's current climate, I would just straight up grade with PSA. The only time I would ever grade with CGC is if I have like a crimp card, an error card, or something weird where it, it's just not a normal card and you want that label to say that it's weird. That is literally the only reason I would suggest grading with CGC is if you had an, have an error card, a misprint card, anything weird like that. That is a, the one freaking thing that CG is good at and probably good at to a fault, let's be honest, is labeling things with all kinds of weird shit on the label to make that card specifically unique and a little extra valuable for you. So CGC for error type cards, any card that's like fucked up, okay? BGS, Beckett, so a year and a half ago, like especially early on 2023, black labels were hot. Black labels were a big freaking deal. Uh, the premium on black labels is not what it used to be six months ago, and it's definitely not what it used to be a year ago. And Beckett's overall customer service and times and you name it and the size of the slab, just everything about Beckett is like, if you don't get the black label, it's just not good, I guess. Nobody wants a Beckett 9. Nobody wants a Beckett 9.5. I mean, maybe. Nobody definitely wants a Beckett 8. Okay. So if you're a beginner or you're new to this or you just want to ensure that you're making the right moves, just keep it simple. And to be honest, until CGC or Beckett give me a reason to start promoting them more, uh, it really is PSA. They all suck, but PSA is the best, okay? PSA, you will get the most return for your slabs. You will have the quickest turnaround times. You will have the easiest user interface, that's what I was trying to say there. Uh, they have a great app. They have great uh, resources built into the app. They are highly connected with uh, eBay and other things like price charting and all that to where it's just a very, PSA is just the most reliable, okay? They fuck up all the time, but overall they're, they still fuck up a lot less than CGC and BGS just never does enough. They just, it seems like they just can't allow themselves to care that much about Pokemon and you know that's their fault and that's their problem um so yeah like psa is would be my endorsement for who you should grade with okay now in this community grading if you if you're if you have never done it before you need to get going like it if all you're doing is collecting and you're doing like say master setting like i do like i you know i master set every new set that comes out now um but i wouldn't be able to afford that if i didn't grade and flip to be honest um but grading and flipping is just a massive part of growing a Pokemon collection, especially like early on in someone's collecting career. Like your first year or two, if you're trying to amass a collection and make money on the side and make some real moves, you need to be okay with like selling off some of your favorite cards in a 10 to make that money. And you need to be looking long term at the long, you know, the big picture and like yes there there are cards that i graded last year you know i graded 600 500 something cards last year um sold almost all of them on ebay netting over twenty thousand dollars um it, you know of all the 500 cards there's probably five or six that i really wish i didn't sell that i just left in my pc but overall doing that going through that process you know i now have a top rated ebay store i have a very strong online presence I have perfect feedback. I'm really good at shipping things in an envelope. I'm really good at shipping things in a bubble mailer, um, you know, business cards, all that. Like, because I accepted the fact that I'm just going to grade and flip and just learn how to do all that and build an online presence. And for me, it's, it was is eBay. Um, I've always been favorable to eBay. Like, I literally sold my first ever eBay sale was my first edition base at Charizard back in 2001 for $350. So, like, in a way, you could say I've been selling Pokemon cards on eBay for over 20 years. <laughs> you know, a little bit of a break, small break in between the beginning and, you know, today. But all I'm saying is you, you just, if all you want to do is collect, that's fine. But if you want to actually make money and progress and you're not grading and you don't know how to grade and you don't know how to pre-grade, like, I don't know how the hell... Like, okay, so your only options left would be to become a rip and shipper and be a popular rip and shipper and, I guess, make money. Or, like, become a super famous YouTuber, like Real Breaking Nate, and just make a shit ton of money on ad revenue. Like, I don't know. Most all of us, the, the all the rest of us that have found ways to make money and profit in this TCG, it's generally, you know, it generally goes to grading. Grading and flipping. It's just the way it is. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? it's It's just another layer that helps this hobby continue and helps the interest and yada 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 
So grading is a huge deal. If, if you haven't graded before, just start out on, on a PSA deal. Like they do little $12, you know, I think 15 is the new bulk, but they'll even do like new, new, uh, you know, new user, whatever, where you can probably get it for like 12 bucks or something like that. And I would just go through the process. Don't send all your best cards, the best you have and think I have to grade my 10 or 15 best cards now, like on your first submission, like choose some not as important ones or whatever. Just the point is, get it out of your system, pop that cherry and get used to grading because the amount of shit you can do with slabs in this hobby is it, it, it's magical, really. Like whether you're just going to immediately list them on eBay, you know, on a Tuesday night on a five day auction. So it ends at Saturday night when most people are shopping on eBay. Hint, hint, five day auction starting on a Tuesday night and on a Saturday. That's how you will get your best results on eBay auctions. It's coming from experience. You have your auction end at 4 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. You're not going to like the results. You have it end at 8 p.m. on a Saturday night. You might like your results, okay? So I'm just, that, that, just saying that, throwing that out there, okay? But grading and flipping is just straight up a must, a necessary thing you absolutely have to learn how to do and you have to get comfortable with if you want to actually profit legitimately with Pokemon cards in this hobby, okay? So PSA is my number one suggestion and just get it done. Just get used to it and get started. And then and then you could start sending in the big boys. Start dropping bigger money on bigger cards with bigger returns after you, you figure it out. Do not use a middleman. Do not fucking use a middleman. I'm sorry. It is very important that you, the card collector who's trying to literally be prosperous and grow your collection, that you do not use others to grade your card. Okay, because then you're not learning shit and you're just paying a premium for something that PSA and Matt Turner, the CEO of PSA, they have literally over the last three years since he took over PSA, they have made it as easy as possible for you to do this stuff. Just in the last two years alone, I've seen just searching up the card name for like, because you got to say what cards you're sending. Just that alone has improved and become so much easier just like in the last year. But mainly the app, the app alone just makes everything way, 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 way easier. Okay, all right, so uh, let's do a fourth and final chapter, and that's going to be finding raw cards online versus in person, okay? So I'm going to start with in person because that's what I do now. I used to do online, and then I moved to Arizona, a lot of card shops around. There's no reason I can't do all this in person. There is no better way to find a minty, minty, raw, beautiful Pokemon card than using your own eyes and looking at it in person, okay? Duh, like, hello. Um, so me, all all my cards, like, because I master set, anytime I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna go buy some Pokemon cards today, I always am like, all right, so I need Iron Boulder from Temporal Forces, I still need Iono again from freaking Paldea, you know, I need this baby shiny, I don't. <laughs> um, but the point is, I'll have it written down, like, okay, I need these for these master sets. But when I walk into that card shop, I have my eyes open. I have my spidey sense. I, I'm trying to look at anything and everything because what, yeah, the card matters, but the condition almost matters more than the card. Like, especially nowadays because beautiful artworks are winning over popular Pokemon. I don't know if you've noticed in this area or in this era, but the most beautiful artworks from a set regardless of what Pokemon, regardless of the Pokemon's name, it doesn't have to be called Charizard to be the most popular card in the set anymore. It could be anything. It could just be a beautiful, you know, like Greninja, okay? So all I'm saying is keep your eyes out, keep your mind open, learn what a minty raw Pokemon card looks like and get good at quickly pre-grading, okay? You see the cards in, in the glass, you see something that looks perfectly bordered. It looks even left to right, top to bottom. It looks like just, mm, looks good. Ask to look at it. Do not waste time. This is another little tip. Don't waste an hour looking at the front of the card and then flip it over and then see all the crap on the back, like the, the messed up corners or the white edges. Anytime you want to quickly pre-grade a bunch of cards, just start with the back. Trust me, because you'll see white and crap and imperfections on the back way sooner and almost immediately compared to the front where you might stare at it for a minute and still not realize some obvious scratches or whatever. 
So that's just the thing is always grade the back of the card first and then flip it around because, yeah, you don't need to waste a bunch of time. Point is, anytime I go anywhere to buy cards, I may have a base idea of what I'm looking for, but nine out of ten times I leave that store with some perfectly centered minty something else, okay? Because it was just there. And if I didn't buy it, I know I would have regretted it, okay? So there's that. So now, but online, now let's say you're, you live in the middle of nowhere and, and you just, there's just like no card shops around. You need to become an eBay, either auction, you need to become an eBay watch list whore. E W W, eBay watch list whore. Yeah, an EW, an EW. <laughs> so an eBay watch list whore, essentially, an EW, is someone who has on eBay. Um, a bunch of saved uh, search preferences. And these saved search preferences could be ending soonest with a very specific type of card. Maybe it's just the set ending soonest. Maybe you put SIR or illustration rare for the set ending soonest. And you just gotta you just gotta be diligent. Just diligent and snipe and bid snipe. I'm gonna teach you guys what bid sniping is real quick. So bid sniping is when you put something on your watch list and you don't put in your highest, most you want to pay bid until literally like the last five seconds. I hate these motherfuckers, and it's part of the reason I just do all my shit in person and raw, raw in, in my community now. But yeah, um, bid sniping is a real thing, and it's actually very, very effective for getting uh, really nice minty Pokemon cards on, on, say, something like eBay or any auction site. Uh, cheaper than usual is... Um, you know, you got auctions that are ending at weird times, okay? Not the Tuesday night to Saturday night scenario, which is the smart scenario. Maybe it's one that's ending at like, you know, 1 a.m. on a Wednesday, okay? Just saying, watch list it and bid snipe it. You'll be surprised at um, the amount of cards you can kind of snipe. You just got to be diligent. And it's just, you just got to beat everyone else who's diligently looking on eBay or wherever for cards, okay? I'm not going to say things like, oh, you need to go buy collections and then part out collections. Um, like personal collection buyouts are generally full of a large amount of fluff and a large amount of cards that are in terrible condition. <clears throat> Me personally, I just don't like terrible condition cards entering the fray whatsoever. Like, I, you know, I just, I'm just saying I stay away. I totally understand why some people will buy collections. And depending on who the person is, the person, how much money you have and who you're buying from, buying out a collection could be an incredible deal, obviously. I'm just saying for you, like especially if you're a new collector and you watch my video and then you go on offer up and try to pay $500 for someone's collection, you could get absolutely burned to oblivion if you don't know what you're doing and you know if you're not good at that. So for me personally, again, I'm just going to recap this right now. When it comes to which products you should buy if you are going to open, I would say booster boxes or Pokemon Center exclusive ETBs just because those promos do tend to help pay for a lot, a lot of the box over time. And yeah, and if you get that promo in a 10, oh yeah, this is what I bring up. So this Maridon right here, see this Maridon? It's a mint nine, okay? So... A Gem Mint 10 Maridon, this card in a Gem Mint 10 just recently sold for 195 and 170 bucks, something like that. But guess what it recently sold for in a 9? 35 bucks. 30 bucks. 25 bucks. This card raw is worth 25 bucks. That means you just wasted $15. I didn't gray this. I actually bought this as a Mint 9 just because I believe these are actually going to slowly but surely on a delayed response follow the PSA 10s. But yeah, so yeah, there you go. I, I never buy slabs, okay? But because this is a stamped promo, aka from a hobby box, I had a feeling the PSA 10s will rather quickly go up in value, which means the PSA 9s will rather slowly go up in value. But let that dichotomy, $195 in a 10, 35 bucks in a 9, okay? That's why pre-grading matters that's why getting good at only buying minty Pokemon cards matters. That's why every single time you decide to buy a booster bundle, an ETB, and blah, 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 whatever the hell else, and let's say you pull nothing, I want you to go through this mental exercise and imagine 
what or how many raw cards you could have bought instead with that same amount of money. And then I want you to imagine if those cards that you bought were in minty minty condition and then you graded them and profited off of them. What I'm saying is for $50, you can net negative 50 via purchasing an ETB or you can buy five $10 perfectly centered minty Pokemon cards, grade them and make 200 something bucks, okay? How you decide to maneuver and navigate through this hobby determines whether this is all a net negative or if this is something fun and prosperous that you do for the rest of your life. It is all based on experience and discipline. All right, that's all I got, guys. Um, yeah, so just so you know, at the end of this month, that's when the real big giveaways are going to be happening. Because, yeah, I did get a package from TCA Gaming, and uh, Brian, this man over here, sent me a whole care package of stuff. So I got way more stuff to give you from Pokey Any, and I also got another Retro Universe giveaway. So more giveaways to come, and again, at, in the comment section, just write Brian or literally at Pokey Any, literally at him. That would be cool, and you will be automatically entered. And until my next one, it's probably going to be this week's hottest cards. Um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Deuces. Whipping packs by the stacks in the search for the snout. Anytime I pull a chunk, that's what it's about. Shiny pink, homie gray, rarity don't matter. I just need that sharp, chubby chunk, gold fatter. Ripping packs by the stacks in the search for the snout.